the great fun of what I do for a living is figuring out ways to measure things that people previously considered intangible. Is there any way to get it all down to a single number? Absolutely not. I mean, you can you can make one number of it, but but the the key is get it all. I mean, you, you don't get it all. You just get what you get. You just get what you get. And as you've um, as you've progressed through uh, dealing with this you'll excuse the expression, in the abstract, uh, to applying these, uh, these theories in real life now as an advisor to the Red Sox, have you found areas where you're saying, whoops, I got that wrong? There are a lot of things that I, that I see differently than I did 12 years ago or 20 years ago. For example, years ago I used to think that the gain, that the, the max optimal strategy was to push the defensive limits of a player to get as much offense on the field as you can. I no longer think that's true. I think that the that the uh, cost of trying to stretch a player's defensive skills probably outweigh the benefits of doing that. I was just totally wrong on that issue years ago. In other words, if uh, you could teach somebody to play first base, and if he wasn't such a great first baseman, so what? Well, the uh, if you have a player who can hit, who can play uh, third base pretty good or second base not very well, are you better off playing him at third or second? I used to argue you're better off playing him at second because he's a better hitter there compared to the other guys. Uh, but I realize now that that's probably because you're you're not dealing with the the uh, entirety of the player's contribution, but with the marginal contributions and making comparisons. That that's probably the wrong answer. We're talking with Bill James, uh, the father of sabermetrics, and now a senior advisor to the Boston Red Sox. His latest book is Popular Crime: Reflections on the Celebration of Violence. You're listening to Talk of the Nation, which is coming to you from NPR News. And how much of the year do you spend in Boston? I travel to Boston about uh, six to eight times a year, usually for a week or two weeks. So, you know, I spend a lot of time there. The, we lived there for a couple of years, but just uh, my wife is getting a master's degree. And so you moved back to Kansas? We are back in Kansas. And I, I, it is true you were the night watchman. I was a night watchman at the time. That, there's a picture of me in the movie, which I, you know, I think they did good research to find the silliest looking picture they could find. The, uh, uh, I suppose everybody thinks that way about their driver's license photo. The, uh, I was a night watchman at that time. I haven't done that since 1979, and I still hear about it, but that's life. <laughs> yeah, I used to be a delivery boy at one point, but I, nobody <laughs> mentions that. Uh, we're talking with Bill James. Uh, let's see if we get Greg on the line. Greg's with us from Swansboro, North Carolina. Hi. Um, I saw the movie yesterday, and it was wonderful. I haven't read the book yet, but now I want to read the book. I am a Red Sox fan, so um, I, 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 I don't really understand statistics. I teach kindergarten, but I certainly did appreciate that and never really thought about baseball in the terms that were presented in the, in the movies. But now I really look forward to reading the book. It is a very good book. Michael Lewis is a wonderful writer, and I've read almost everything he's read except Moneyball, but I, I, I would rather see my own world with my own eyes. Uh, but I, right. the rest of his books are wonderful. Well, I look forward to reading it, and I, I've enjoyed listening to you. I just got out of school and turned it on. I thought, oh, I need to call because the book, the movie was fantastic. Thanks. Greg, thanks very much for the call. Thank you. Uh, would Would you agree that, that the movie is fantastic? It's a very good movie. It, it's extremely entertaining. The uh, 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 There are a lot of scenes in the movie that seem to be setting up a storyline and then just totally disappear. And in an odd way, this works because you're constantly being set up for cliches that never mature. Uh, so you're always a little bit off guard. It, it, it works very well as, as a movie. Uh, my friend Rob Nyer says he's seen it twice, and both times at the end of the movie, the audience was applauding. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, did they really have a soda machine in Oakland where the players had to spend a <laughs> dollar for it? They didn't even have that in the, the, the depths of minor league ball where I worked. Is that right? I, I, I do not know whether that's true or invented, honestly. Uh, this is an email from uh, Michael, who emails uh, Bunts, especially squeeze plays and stolen bases, add a great deal of excitement to what is often a pretty slow game. The uh, baseball does become slow sometimes; it's totally unnecessary. The uh, uh, you can you can play baseball fast, or you can play it slow, and for some reason we have chosen to play it slow. The uh, which is unfortunate, but. Nothing you can do about it. There is also the question of statistical anomalies, uh, things that were outliers, I think that they're called. Uh, in the film, the Oakland Athletics proceed to win 20 games in a row, which was uh, the American League record. Uh, they broke that. Uh, your club you work for, the Boston Red Sox, is in the process, perhaps, of an historic swoon. Well, the uh, the Red Sox still are 
a game ahead in the wild card hunt, and I have a lot of confidence in the team. Uh, I'm sure you do. But as you look at these, how how do you justify them as, as statistically? Are they just anomalies? Well, the Oakland A's, who were a very, very good team, uh, and were in the playoffs regularly in, in the, at the time the movie is set, uh, would wipe out every fall in the playoffs, usually in three straight games. And it's painful, but there's not very much you can do about it because in a short series anything can happen. It, you know, and anomalies are are that not that anomalous in a short series. In a short series, anything anything is as likely to happen as anything else, just about. The uh, so uh, that that is something that we deal with constantly in baseball. Does their failure to win the World Series, the last game of the season, as Billy Bean puts it in the movie, uh, does that uh, call into question the theories? Well, you'll have to decide that on your own. The uh, If something is true, it's true regardless who wins the last series of the year. Uh, and as far as you're concerned, it's true. <clears throat> well, no, right, no, I don't claim to be right about everything. I think we were right about some things. If there was one contribution that you look back on and say, uh, this was what opened people's eyes, what do you think it was? Uh, one thing that got a lot of attention was the Pythagorean theorem of baseball, which is that there's a predictable relationship between the number of runs you score and the number of runs you allow and your one-loss record. Uh, at the time that <clears throat> I was first advocating that idea, people were really skeptical about it, but it's one of those things you can easily check it out and it turns out to be true. So I think that played a key role. It's reflected in the movie. It played a key role in opening people's eyes to uh, the fact that these kind of theories actually did connect to the real game. So observable reality did change people's minds. I hope so. Bill James, thanks very much, and congratulations. Thank you. Bill James is a senior advisor for the Boston Red Sox, and he joined us today from a studio at Kansas Public Radio in Lawrence. Uh, he's uh, a senior advisor to the Red Sox. His latest book is Popular Crime, Reflections on the Celebrations of Violence. Tomorrow, as more Americans die from prescription drug overdoses than in car accidents, we'll talk about what can be done to reduce prescription overdoses. Join us for that conversation. You can find us now and like us if you'd like to on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com slash NPR talk, all one word. This is Talk of the Nation from NPR News. I'm Neil Conan in Washington.